afternoon. Um, welcome to HR's training on empathy and evaluations this morning, or it's actually this afternoon, uh, one o'clock on the 12th of January, 2021. Um, just wanted to welcome you all for, and thank you all for coming. I wanted to introduce myself and the rest of my team members. For those that don't know us, um, there's quite a, many faces on the, the call that I've never met. So um, I've seen some names and, and now I get to link the face to the name. So it's helpful for me. Um, my name is Abel Johnson, work here in the growth team in the HR department here at Boise State. Um, I have with me all of my colleagues, I think most of my colleagues are here, um, Kyle Galloway, um, who will be helping co-facilitate this training with me. Um, he'll be able to keep me on track and, and uh, slap me upside the head if I say something inappropriate. So um, I also have Tiffany Trader, our fearless leader, the growth team as well, and then Denise Stringer as well. As, Part of the growth team she's going to help us answer some questions as well it's good to see all your faces um welcome to the evaluation training we're only going to take one hour of your time today it's going to be pretty short and sweet um just so you know as the my t-mobile carrier tells me this uh, call will be recorded for quality assurance <laughs> so we will be recording the session today and be sending this training out to the rest of your colleagues um, as well as yourselves if you want to revisit this later on uh, before you do your evaluations and you want to re-listen to the training or for those that just missed our training today, they'll have an opportunity to uh, hear the content that we're presenting today. Um, so I just want to let you know about that. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. So, you know, the performance evaluation or the performance appraisals, you know, the annual performance evaluation is an interesting time and it's um, it can be an important tool as managers in your role as in uh, providing performance growth and feedback and making sure your employees are meeting those expectations that you've set for them. But it's the annual performance really um, typically involves talking about an employee's accomplishments, uh, meeting their goals and, you know, making improvements where necessary. Um, there's a lot that goes into the performance evaluation. And this year it's a little bit different though, as we think and reflect back on this year, um, as many of us know, uh, because of COVID and, and us working remotely, things have changed qu quite uh, dramatically. So, you know, this year we, we wanted to prevent, uh, we wanted to present the content, but also wanted to present a different way and perspective of viewing that performance um, evaluation this year. So when you think of the performance evaluation, we hope um, that you will consider that through the, a different lens this year. And we want to stress that flexibility is key. And as you can tell from our topic slide, that uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about empathy and how that plays a role um, as managers when you go to do your evaluations with your employees. Um, your primary goal you know, as a supervisor is to help your employees perform their jobs um, as best they can and, and to help develop them in their role as well. As many of you know, probably more so than some of us, if you've been here a long time and in these types of positions, you know, that requires a lot of work and commitment on your end as a manager. You may have many, many people you supervise. Um, you may have to put in a lot of time and effort into having those conversations and filling out those forms. Um, but as, a, as is anything in life, you know, we truly believe that the, the commitment and investment that you put into your employees and that, that process, the time and energy is what you, what you put in is what you get out of it. And it really can make a difference for those employees that you have those great conversations with and that you can provide that, that feedback and that recognition. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to what kind of topics we're gonna touch base on today. And for that, I'll go ahead and tie, I'll throw that back over to Kyle and let him introduce himself a little bit and then he'll run into what are the, the five um, topics we'll hit today. And then we'll go from there. Thanks Abel, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome, uh, Kyle Galloway, work closely on the growth team with Abel, Tiffany and Denise. Glad to be here. So today's topics we're gonna you know, discuss understanding 2020 and the challenges this year has brought us. You know, I think it's easy to say that, you know, 2020 for a lot of us has been either difficult or different or both. And, um, you know, very challenging more so than we probably have ever experienced. So we're gonna touch base on that. We're gonna discuss how showing empathy, um, you know, really applies to the evaluation piece this year. And, and, and another piece of that is how to have that discussion around it having the conversation regarding performance evaluations and what that tone sounds like this year. We'll touch base on that. And we'll also discuss some things to be mindful of, some things you may not be thinking about, some things that are HR related that uh, funnel down to managers, uh, such as some of the approved leaves. So we'll touch base on that. 
and you know we'll leave time for questions feel free to unmic or you know submit a question in the chat box and we'll be happy to stop our, our presentation to answer anything that you feel is important to us so we're looking forward to a good discussion this afternoon and to kick things off i'm going to kick it back over to abel we're going to ask you all a question yeah thanks kyle so to get the juices flowing this afternoon on a dreary Tuesday, um, we wanted to just kind of pose a question and we'd love for anybody to unmic or even just throw it in the chat box. We'll try to read those as they come in. Um, my colleagues on the growth team, as well as um, Tiffany. I think Tiffany Whitman also joined. She's also a member of our growth team. I don't want to leave her out. So she's on the call as well. And feel free to unmic and we'll have the rest of our members um, also read those chats. But in one word or less, or you can only have one word, you can spell it out, I guess. Um, how would you describe managing your team this last year, you know, amidst COVID-19 and working from home, you know, how would you describe that? And so obviously in this, this slide, there's a couple, of, there's many words that other people have described it, but I'd love to hear kind of how you felt or how you would describe that in your own experience. Randy, inspiring. I like, I like that word. That's, um, that's very different. It's very actually positive. It's kind of got a positive spin on it, which is uh, kind of cool to hear from your perspective. Any other inspiring or words? It can, it can also be, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be positive. It can be negative, be hard, grateful. April, okay, great. Creative, I like that. I like that one. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Keep them coming, Com compassion. I like that, and I think that goes along with what we'll talk about today. So I'd love to love for have any of you unmic and, and stop and pause and share your experiences along the way. Um, but one of the, the reasons why we want to start off kind of getting some input is, you know, COVID-19 has kind of shifted the way we played the game this, this last year, and that has affected our performance management style and performance evaluations. And, um, you know, for, for many, um, managing a team may be new or maybe it's not new but it's also different and new in the fact that it's we're all remote so you can't just walk down the hall and talk to somebody and and uh, have a discussion it's, it's a little harder than that um so you, you may have to come up with some creative ways as someone said um amazing uh, maybe you found out some things about yourself or your management style that that you know COVID 19 work remote has kind of forced you to learn about yourself um, so whatever the reason is, we, we love your input and we'd love to hear kind of what your experiences are. Um, so how do we, how did we get to where we are now, right? Working from home, obviously COVID-19 helped us get there um, willingly or non-willingly. Um, but understanding 2020, I'm going to kick this back over to Kyle to kind of set the stage. And then we're going to talk about empathy. We're going to talk about some of these words and how they play into, okay, that's great, empathy's great, but, but I gotta do an evaluation. What does it have to do with evaluations? And so we'll kind of tie that into what that has to do with the topic and how you can actually implement um, these great words into the evaluation this year. Kyle? Thanks, Abel. You know, there's no question that 2020 has been an unprecedented year for us all. You know, as a university, we've had drastic changes with quickly transitioning some jobs and or services to a virtual setting. We've adapted the work environment to provide social distancing for roles that can't be performed virtually. Uh, we're supporting employees through unexpected challenges that they're facing at home, such as virtual school for their kids, COVID-19 related concerns or diagnosis, among many more things. You know, currently over 80 million people worldwide have been affected with COVID-19. I think we all know that. So when we think about what's been challenging for you as a manager, you know, those same challenges and or concerns are being faced by your employees or staff members as well. You know, our lives have changed along with our work. Social gatherings have been limited, and I'll explain a little bit later on how this can affect someone's work input. So here are a couple of things to think about, you know, prior to your evaluations with your employees. You know, does your employee know what's expected of them? You know, have you set those clear expectations with your employee, you know, um, post COVID-19? You know, with a lot of us working from home or in some kind of remote setting, um, it can be difficult to have those metrics on an employer staff members if those performance expectations weren't um, clear post COVID-19. Some yeah, of our employees and staff members, you know, have never left as, the, I'm sorry, Abel, did you say something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, uh, sorry to, to butt in, Kyle. I think for this group, you know, I think most of you are still on campus. Is there, is that correct? Can you get a thumbs yeah. up or a nod? Thumbs up. Yep. So, so many of you, I see a couple of people that, look like either an office or maybe a home, but for many of you on this call with campus operations, many of you are probably still at the office. Is that right? 
Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure that we're. I oh no, you're we're, perfect. Now, and this yeah. next piece was just for the people that are working, you know, um, on campus still, um, because a lot of you guys have never left. That you guys are essential to the business, and we appreciate that. Um, so, is it possible that you all have faced similar challenges? You know that, uh, you know that you that you know your son may be. Have you faced challenges? being at work still that some are facing being in a remote setting. So maybe like walk-in traffic, uh, maybe the way we're going about cleaning different buildings differently, um, you know, have those duties or, or, or challenges, you know, been affected with COVID-19? And I think the answer is yes. You know, we're doing things differently whether you're on campus or off campus. Um, so it's definitely a different year. So because this year has been so different, you know, we do believe in that empathy thing um, and that, and it really should play a part or a piece of the, of, of the puzzle with the evaluations and, um, really to kind of kick off that empathy discussion. I'm going to kick it back over to Abel and, uh, touch base on how empathy is really the theme for 2021. Yeah. So thanks Kyle. So, you know, this topic is kind of awesome and, and great for, you know, maybe the majority of campus, but for those, uh, for this group, particularly many of you have never left. So. Um, we're probably preaching to the choir a little bit here, so please feel free to unmic and I'd love to share your insights and thoughts with the rest of the group. We'd love to learn from you as well as you're still there. But what, what we're kind of our message to the rest of the campus and, and to the rest of those that are that have kind of shifted their work remote a little bit is one of empathy because we we feel it's important because again, none of us saw this company. We didn't sign up to all work from home and or stay on campus and, and have less foot traffic. All of this is the unknown, right? All of this is out of our control. But when we think of empathy, you know, the, de the, the, the definition of the in the dictionary is just simple. It's empathy is understanding someone else's feelings. Um, but I like to dig a little deeper than that and go below the surface. So, you know, Simon Sinek, one of the great, in my opinion, minds of this generation, um, he has a, a TED talk that talks about empathy a little bit more and happy to share that with you in the, in the chat. Maybe my colleague can throw it in there. But he defines empathy as empathy as being concerned about the human being and not just their output. And so when you think about that a little deeper, you know, the performance evaluation is, is just that. We do have to evaluate uh, the performance and output of, of individuals. But what we're saying is that output might have been, you know, in the weeds or it might, it might have been a curvy path to get there, not because necessarily of that person in individual performance, but because of the factors of COVID that have affected that person to perform those outputs. And so uh, we want to be sensitive to that as, as leaders and managers when we are doing the evaluation to, to think and build upon that, you know, what what has maybe affected this person and and that causes their output to be lower, right? Why didn't they maybe, why didn't they get the task done that I, they were supposed to get done or that was, why was it delayed? But again, going back aside from that, going back to the definition of being concerned about the human being, the person, and, and not just what they didn't accomplish maybe because of COVID or, not, or because of not COVID. So what we're kind of saying in HR is, you know, many of us have dealt with COVID in a different, different way. Um, and whether that has been different or difficult this year, um, we want to be sensitive to the human being behind the output and how are they doing. And as, as managers and leaders on campus, um, that is one of our, the greatest priorities and uh, stewardships that have fallen upon our shoulders is caring for the people in our care. Um, so empathy is our theme kind of for this year for 2020 and, and, and NHR as we go about sharing our knowledge and and our message across campus when you go to do that evaluation to think about that a little bit more. Um, and again, you're in a great position to understand the needs of your employees, the fears, the wants, the struggles. Um, you know, has it been a rough year? And your approach and your tone should be one of compassion and kindness. Um, your language, use language that truly understands or shows that you understand the concerns of your employees and why they didn't get something done or, or why it has been difficult for them. Um, so this is all great. And may, maybe be, some of you may be thinking this is a great topic, but dot, dot, dot. And, and I want to caveat this slide and this, um, this part of the presentation by saying empathy is well, what we're not saying is that because of COVID-19 empathy is a free get out of jail card. And it's just a complete hall pass for somebody. That's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is 
as supervisors and managers, let's be mindful of some of the struggles that our employees may be faced and their output because of COVID-19. Um, so one of the greatest uh, questions comes, well, how do I do that, right? Um, part of that starts with just having those discussions. You know, have you checked in with your employees uh, or do you check in with them on a regular basis? And, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, in February before these, these evaluations are due. I'm talking about those ongoing conversations. Um, again, linking back to not just their output, but, you know, how is a John or how is a Jim or a Joe or a Susie? You know, how, what are you struggling with? What do you, what can I do to help you? Um, do they have the things and tools to, to, and support to do their job well? Um, and so these are the things that really get us to where we are now. And so now we're going to move into how do I actually implement what you're saying, HR, you know, empathy into having the conversation with my employees? What are some tactics and tips? And for that, I'll kick it back to, over to Kyle. We'll share a quick clip about um, some of the things that we find most helpful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the video, how to conduct a better performance review conversation, um, you know, really does a great job at, you know, showing how to have that right conversation with your employees. So I'm going to play it right now. It's about three minutes and uh, we'll, we'll come back shortly. Conducting the performance review conversation can be challenging, both for you as a leader, as well as for the employee. The employee may be concerned that they're going to be sitting in the hot seat and get judged. They might also worry about how the performance appraisal could affect the potential for them to get a raise. You might be concerned that your feedback can cause them to get emotional or defensive or even argumentative. That's why it's really helpful to have a plan in place when going into this conversation. So I'm going to share with you seven tips to confidently have the performance review conversation. Tip number one, don't ad lib. Use the forms that have been provided by your company for the performance review conversation. Number two, make sure your employee gets to prepare the exact same forms so that you can be on the same page and there's no surprises for them. You don't want them to be frustrated when suddenly they feel like they're being judged for something that they just weren't expecting. Number three, don't just dive in and get to business. Build some rapport, set the tone by asking them how their week went, thank them for showing up to the meeting, and maybe discuss something like how their family is doing or any vacation plans they might have. Number four, before you give your feedback, First, allow them in each category to tell you how they felt their performance was in the past year. Tell them where you agreed with their performance opinions, and then tell them where you may have differed. This is an important phrase. Instead of saying disagree or allowing room for any kind of argument, just say, I appreciate your feedback on that. I would agree. You did a great job with X, Y, and Z. Where my opinion differs a bit is, and then give the example. Number six, when giving feedback, make sure you'll use only observable facts, not assumptive judgments. You don't want to say something like, Mike, it really seems like you've checked out and you don't even care anymore this past quarter. Instead, say something like, I've noticed you've been tardy three times out of the last four weeks. And in most of the meetings in the last two weeks, you've really only participated once. What can you tell me about this? This gives them an opportunity to share their side and really explain what might be going on with them. Which leads us to number seven. They may become defensive or argumentative. If so, as challenging as it may be, allow them the time to vent and listen to what they have to say. No need to prescribe an answer, just listen, and if necessary, ask them to share a little bit more. Want an even deeper dive on how to conduct the performance review conversation? Head over to livingasaleader.com slash shop and check out our performance management e-learning bundle. In this two-part course, we not only talk about the conversation, but we also discuss how to set goals with your employee and how to coach them throughout the year. For even more tips like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to livingasaleader.com and subscribe to our blog. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. But I think the video does a great job at explaining the importance of your tone um, before you or during that uh, performance evaluation conversation. So some things to remember, um, you know, I think the most important piece is make sure you have a plan in place. Uh, we're not at living, we're coming, for, we're coming to our meeting prepared with a plan. Building rapport sets the tone and, and, and really sets the foundation of how the evaluation discussion is gonna go. So make sure that we're building rapport. Allow employees to say how well they did. And like he said in the video, you know, where do you agree or disagree? 
And we're only using facts when we are going over evaluation goals, um, stuff that is measurable. And really at the end, allow the employee time to vent. And sometimes there's no you know, need to give an answer. We're just letting the employee just talk at that point. So those are some things to remember. And, you know, again, some suggestions that you can use, you know, prior to your conversation. You know, we like these phrases because they show empathy. You know, thank you for your contributions during this difficult time. You know, I, I appreciate how well you've adjusted. You know, we know this year has been difficult, so let's focus on some things that went well. You know, the conversations that start with empathy really give the perception to the employee or staff member that you do care. And it allows for you to have the ability to turn any situation into more of a positive outcome. And what we'll do now, we're gonna to touch base a little bit on performance management. And, and for that, I'm gonna kick it back over to Abel. Yeah, thanks Kyle. So um, I think those are great examples. Some of those phrases, um, I kind of wrote some down for myself because I think it just shows um, how to implement that em empathy into those conversations. Um, but yeah, so for effective employee performance reviews, this graphic, this slide shows a lot of great tips, um, you know, that we can all use to, to be better prepared. You know, setting goals with your employees is important always. You know, meeting with them regularly, again, going back to the how often do you meet with your employees? Um, how, do, how do you know what their struggles are and their needs are and their strengths and weaknesses if you're not having those dialogues and those conversations and it, and it being continuous throughout the year? Um, you know, soliciting that feedback, um, sharing, you know, performance review for sharing that same format, the, the forms that we provide, along with some other tools that we have in HR. So all of this is great, right? Uh, but goals, so goals are important. And I'm picking on the goals here, but goals are important and still matter. But again, going back to the COVID-19 and our current situation, um, you know, they may need to be adjusted to the adapt to the current circumstances. Um, Employee goals that were set for one year might need to be considered through, or from last year, might be considered through the pandemic, right? And and what 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 was maybe doable then isn't necessarily doable now. So again, setting new expectations. Um, but again, so thinking about your own team's goals and your employees, again, do they know what's expected, and do they have the tools to do their job? Some of the best things that we can always ask of ourselves. But now, if you want to unmic or throw in the chat too, we'd like to hear from you from as managers and supervisors and leaders, what are some of the roadblocks that maybe you've encountered um, thus far or, or that you're encountering now when it comes to, you know, the question, how do I measure the performance of my team during this pandemic? You know, that's how do I do that? You know, again, maybe some of you are remote, some, maybe many of you may have never, never left, but how do you do that? And that's a question that we've uh, encountered many times in these trainings. And so I'd love to hear any of your advice or anything that you've kind of seen that works for your team. And we'll do a, we'll do a, as what Casey says on my team, we'll do a zoom pause and we're, we're happy to, we're okay with awkward moments. So we'll, we'll wait it out. <laughs> Or we can pick on some people. Tiffany, you know, P Tiffany on our team, Tiffany uh, Trader, maybe she could start us off with answering that question or some thoughts of her own. Um, that question for our team is more um, impactful because many of us are still remote. So, you know, Tiffany, do you want to share any of your thoughts or ideas on that? Sure. Um, as far as we used to run down the hall and have a quick conversation, and now we have chats where we have a group chat that we share information in. So checking in, even if it's just how was your weekend? I know Abel at the beginning of this week threw in a chat how people's weekends are and you throw in some pictures of basketball games or what we did this weekend to keep us connected. Yeah, th that's, a, that's a great idea. I didn't even think of that. Thanks, Tiffany. I think some of that can just be very casual, uh, depending on the culture of your own team and those leaders that um, that that are kind of setting that that environment. But a lot of all, our team, we all know probably a little bit too much about each other, so we like to share basketball game pictures of our kids or projects that we're working on. So we always kind of start the week off that way. And again, it's just about checking in and creating that dialogue. I think that's the most important thing. And it builds trust and transparency with your employees, right? And your team to be able to, when there is a problem, they feel they can come to you and they can express um, what's going on. Um, so one of the biggest things we wanna hit on before we move on 
on this slide is, you know, some of us have gone remote, some of us have not, whatever that circumstance may be, when it comes to the evaluation, one of the things that's not on that evaluation that may need to be considered this go around is giving credit for adaptability, right? So this is a good time to consider, you know, updating maybe your own criteria in your in your group or your employees is for those that have made that jump leap to, to remote or for those many of you that have never left and the rest of campus has, you know, giving credit for your employees to just be flexible and agile, um, you know, and so I think that's something that we overlook sometimes too. And um, I think that it deserves that credit for, especially for many of you who are still on campus and um, the kind of the front line for our employees. So anyway, that was just a thought that came to me about that. Any uh, other thoughts or ideas or comments you want to unmic and or throw in the chat? All right. Um, I'll kick it back over to Kyle. Or oh, actually, I think this next one is mine. So Kyle, do you want to flip? I think you already flipped it, right? I There's did. Delay. Okay, cool. So we'll watch this quick video and then we'll, we'll explain why this uh, 20 second video is here and what point it's conveying. Look at the cute dog. So um, while we were watching that, what, this is probably my favorite slide out of the deck, I'm not going to lie. Um, and while every time we do this activity, I always have to watch people's faces. I have to scroll to see everybody's faces to see their reaction. Um, so it was kind of fun. But so why did we include this? Um, you know, um, AmeriQuest that puts these, puts these, um, AmeriQuest puts these uh, videos out and their slogan is kind of, you know, don't judge too quickly. We won't. And the reason why we thought that would be appropriate kind of to go along with our theme is, you know, many, many times one perspective from, from one perspective, looking at an employee or a, a situation, something may seem wrong or, or inappropriate but from, an, from their perspective, they may just be thinking, this is harmless. I didn't do anything wrong or there's nothing, nothing wrong about this current situation. So I think just being aware of your employee situations, not judging too quickly and understanding there's a lot going on underneath the iceberg that um, we maybe not know about as supervisors. So there's a lot going on in our employees' lives below the surface of what we see at work. You know, And right now, as many, as many of the people on campus outside of um, probably this group are because they're working from home. There's a lot of other things they're dealing with, um, you know, daycare kids, and they're wearing lots of hats. So for that, I'll let Kyle kind of dive into that a little bit more and some of the challenges that we're seeing. Thanks, Abel. You know, this year, we like to, you know, use the word harmless. You know, anything that is out of an employee's control really shouldn't be used against them during an evaluation period. And what does that mean? You know, approved leaves from HRs, you know, people know about FMLA, Families Medical Leave Act. We've had furloughs, Americans with, with Disabilities Act, ADA. And what's new this year, Families First Coronavirus Response Act. You know, these are approved leaves um, that everyone in every department has utilized. And when they're away from work on one of these protected leaves, then they should not be evaluated on the time that they were away from work. So we wanna make sure that that message is clear uh, across you know, the whole campus, whether you've been at work or you've been um, working in a remote setting. You know, if, if you have people on your team that have been away from work because of one of these issues due to the coronavirus or due to something medically related, then we are to hold them harmless for that time that they spent away from the job. And a lot of us, you know, are wearing many hats, you know, whether you're, you're on campus still or, or remote, you know, there are those that are there on campus that, you know, have kids in daycare or, or in school. And, you know, you know, you know, what if COVID, a COVID case is, you know, um, 
in a daycare where they have to leave quickly and go pick up their child, you know, that stuff is out of their control, right? Uh, for those of us like myself, you know, I have three kids doing remote learning, my wife's working from home. So today I have to use my phone as a hotspot uh, because I don't want the internet to, you know, die down on us. So this stuff's all new. A lot of this stuff is out of our control, you know, internet speed is 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 slower because of my family being online so we want to ensure that you have the whole package about your employee and what they're experiencing whether you're like i said on campus or off campus uh, many of us are wearing many hats um like i said earlier you know teaching our kids working at the same time or worried about leaving work to go pick up a kid you know these are real life scenarios that are going on every day that we have in HR. So as a manager, we want you guys to understand that there's a lot of things going on beneath the layer that you may not see. So as you're doing that evaluation or you're wondering why somebody may have left early, you know, are you asking if it was something that, you know, could have been prevented? And, you know, if it if it's something that is, you know, just because they are being late for whatever, whatever reason that has nothing to do with some of these other issues that we're speaking of, then like Abel said earlier, we're gonna hold them accountable. So this is not just a free pass because we're in COVID 2020, 2021. Uh, but as you build those relationships with your employees, you're asking these questions to ensure that we get the right kind of answers to ensure that the whole process is run smoothly. And for that, Abel, I'm gonna kick it back to you for the iceberg effect. Yeah, so um, again, uh, I, I think it's interesting. Um, the iceberg effect is kind of a, a model or kind of a, a narrative that we've used a lot uh, and a lot of people use over the years, but you know, as, as people, we, we have, uh, as my wife would say, because the movie we watched a few weeks ago was Shrek, uh, the ogres are like onions and they have layers. So as people, we have layers too. And, and you know, we there's sometimes um, we, we only get to see certain p sides of people um, in a working relationship, you know, in a normal certain setting. But lately with, with many people working from home, um, a lot of those other layers of their lifestyle and you know the kids in the background and you know some of the other hats that are, that are being juggled um all of that comes to light and, and um, we get to see a little bit more of those layers but with that there's other challenges too that, um, as we've stated before um so basically um all of those get agitated and come up to the surface and so going back to the video with the dog and the brownies um you know from one perspective, it could look like someone's not paying attention. Their Zoom cameras off. Um, many, many, you know, many, many times when we do this session, people don't have their camera on. And from a manager's perspective, that may send a message of, oh, they're not engaged or they're not listening. Um, but again, there's there's more to the iceberg, and there's more. Um, again, flexibility is the key. Compassion and empathy are kind of our role models as we think about those employees and kind of what they're dealing with. Um, and again, for this group, for many of you that, some of you that are working from home, some of you are still not, um, that, that may be applicable or not. Um, so I think I'll pause there just for a second. Did we have any questions or thoughts so far? Anything you'd like to share? Um, any questions regarding, you know, this evaluation season as we go into it? Um, I do want to make it, take a quick second to mention um, that we do have, another e-module learning uh, training session that you can click on. It's a video at your own pace of how to complete the actual form. So for those that um, are new to the university or new to a management position, if you have some employees you have to do an evaluation for and you need to fill out that form, the HR form, if you need some help doing that, there's a video on how to complete the form, the fields and all that. That's also available on our HR website. Or for those of you that have just, um, you've been a manager a long time, but you do that once a year and you just need a refresher. That's also a, a good opportunity to, to take a look at that video. Um, and Denise threw that in the chat bar for your reference as well, if you need that. Any other questions so far? Um, I know some of this content may seem, you know, a, a little far fetched because many of you are not working from home, um, but um, love to get any input or feedback from you so far. I have a question that's not maybe directly related to what you have been presenting, but indirectly. Uh, I know sure. for a while we've been uh, behind the rest of the state of Idaho with our performance evaluation, just the, the process and the actual form. Um, and I know there's been some debate whether 
that's the best form to use moving forward. But I just wondered if there's been any motion on updating that, whether it is getting us updated with the rest of the state of Idaho or moving off on our own. Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Aaron, for bringing that up. Um, yeah, we, we have, in HR, we are very aware about um, eva performance evaluation is very important. It's a very big component and key to a successful performance management uh, process and system. It's one of the tools that we use. Um, there's a couple of hurdles and burdens, bur barriers that are in our way of changing that, as maybe you're aware. Part of that is because we, part of our state of agency, DHR, has some some of that lift and some of that say in what we change on the form and what we don't. Um, but there's a couple things to consider. You know, we also have to think about if we change a form um, or a, a tool, you know, how what kind of grading criteria do we go to that's fair, equitable across different classifications, university-wide, um, you know, cr creating a new training system around that. So that is all something that's in the play and that's something that's always on our minds. Um, and so that is something that's in the works. We haven't made any huge decisions, but we definitely know that that's something we want to address. And I think the way we get there between here and there is, again, building communication between employee and supervisor, a consistent loop of communication and trust with your employees so that it's not just a one-time big shebang. It's a, I have to, can I check in with you? Can I talk to you? You know, I'm, I'm having trouble with this in my job. I'm not, I feel like I can't do this. This is what's bothering me. And it's a continual performance management that grows into that one year evaluation that's linked to, you know, your pay and whatnot. So I think what we're trying to do is build those steps towards that bigger thing, that bigger change, but that bigger change in all reality, Aaron, is a big lift. And there's a lot of, um, you know, bureaucracy and, and DHR things that are, we have to lift as well. We have to be mindful of. And, and part of that is not just an excuse. That's the reality. But we also have to keep in mind there's been so much change with COVID and to change something else right now, you know, and train everybody. It's, it's a huge lift and ask, but we are working towards getting to a, a better place. Thank you for that. I, I think my struggle and others that I've talked to has always been, I, we have that in mind and I, I, I try to do uh, all the things that you implore us to do in these trainings. Uh, it is sometimes difficult to remind myself to keep that documentation as we're moving along and as those conversations are happening. happening. And I, I just know that one of the tools that was out there in the state of Idaho, at least I was uh, somewhat made aware of it, is that at least there's some online documentation mechanism where that sort of conversation is stored and can be referenced by yeah. both employer and employee as things are moving along. So that was intriguing. Yeah, no, that's, and that's a great, great thing to think about. And, and as and we've thought about that too, we, we want to be able to document that and had to have it somewhere where an employee can refer back to you. And as you have those conversations, whether that's monthly or weekly, you know, the employee and the employer can like, Oh, where did we leave off? Right. Going back to the T-Mobile analogy that I always say, when I call T-Mobile, have a question, and I'm like, oh, I don't have that information, I'll call you back. I don't want to have to get somebody else. And if I do, I want there to be notes so I know I don't have to retell my story, right? And so that that's always a great analogy and a great point. Um, to be frank, we just, as a university, as scalability for all of our employees, we just don't have a tool like that in place yet. And that, again, that's part of our research and our development as we move towards a different evaluation appraisal um process is looking into a tool that possibly meets our needs and it's important to have our needs defined in the problem before we select the tool so it's not coming after or before it's it's, it's intentional great thoughts i love the thoughts aaron yeah you're you're ahead of the curve on that <laughs> how you may I ask you um how many employees do you supervise uh right now i have two direct reports and then indirect it gets kind of weird but gotcha <laughs> Well, awesome. Thank you for your input. I appreciate that. Uh, growth team members, did I miss anything? Anything that you wanted to add that I that I missed on air, answering Aaron's question? I think you hit it, Abel. Um, you know, I think we, we recognize some of the challenges, um, you know, that face us at the university, you know, um, you know, those that are classified versus professional versus, you know, faculty and, and finding a tool that's uniform for, you know, us all. Um, you know, that's challenging, but we definitely recognize, you know, where we need to go. And that's right, Aaron, as far as having that ongoing dialogue and the frequency and checking back on notes. Um, so when you do have the conversation at the end of the year, you know, you have, you know, notes that can build up to that point. So 
I thought that was awesome. But yeah, we do. We are looking into that, and and hopefully we're able to have um, some more answers um, for you all soon. Yeah, thanks, Aaron, for that. Um, I'm going to make our fearless leader sweat a little bit. Tiffany Trader, did you have any anything else you wanted to add? Okay, she's good. <laughs> awesome. Um, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate you speaking up. That's that's a great point. Love to talk uh, offline too. Any ideas you have, we'd love to be a partner. Um, we're going to go ahead and move into a quick other video. I'll let Kyle, do you want to introduce Matt Neese? Many of you may already know Matt, but um, let him introduce Matt Neese and kind of what this video is about. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Matt's no stranger to the campus community. You know, he's an expert on empathy and mental health and has been, you know, a great resource to us in HR during this pandemic. So we were lucky to partner with him on this video um, regarding, you know, empathy. And, you know, here are some of his thoughts that he had. So it's about two minutes long, um, but it's very valuable. So we hope you guys enjoy it as well. When it comes to applying my knowledge of empathy, there's a really great framework that helps me keep in check. On one end of the spectrum, there's what we call cognitive empathy. This is when I understand cognitively what's going on for another person emotionally, but I don't have my own emotional connection to that experience and therefore don't care enough to do anything about this understanding. On the other end of the spectrum, there's emotional empathy. This is when I'm connecting so much emotionally with my perception of what the other person is feeling that I lose myself in a moment. I become flooded with my own emotions in an attempt to align with the other person that I'm unable to help be helpful in that situation. And then in the middle, there's what we call compassionate empathy, which as you might expect is a healthy blend between the first two. Uh, based on my working knowledge of this person's life, when I'm feeling compassionate empathy, I have enough information to infer what they are likely experiencing. I have enough emotional connection to this person and their circumstances to have the desire to help. And because I'm staying grounded in my own identity, I'm able to be moved by this experience and the ability to compassionately or empathically support this person. You know, Matt does a great job at, you know, explaining empathy better than Abel and I could ever do. So we appreciate him and his, uh, you know, his thoughts and we really wanted to loop in Matt because, you know, HR doesn't have all the answers. Um, so we were building this slide deck. We wanted to ensure that we had experts along the side of us to ensure that our message is the same. So you guys get the right message from those that are really the experts here on campus. So Matt did a great job at, at helping us out and, 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 and really, you know, helping us understand why it's important. So we appreciate Matt for that. As we go we, on to the next piece of it, um, you know, I think this is huge for those that are essential to any business, people that really haven't had any shifts or changes that, you know, people are plugging away right now, um, just like they did about nine months ago. They haven't really changed. They're, you know, they're there on the front lines. And, you know, really according to the CDC, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, has been really stressful for people. I think we all know that. Fear and anxiety about a new disease and what can happen can be overwhelming and cause strong emotions in adults and in children. So public health actions such as social distancing can make people feel isolated and lonely and can increase anxiety and really ultimately that can affect work. And, you know, the first piece of that was for those that are still working in that setting. You know, there's a great fear that there are people on campus that are working that haven't left that are afraid to pass something on to one of their loved ones. Um, you know, with the disease that's unknown on, and some of us are so unclear on, you know, how we contract it, touch of services or being around other people, you know, for those that are around people every day, um, you know, that's a real worry. It's a worry for me. Um, you know, I came from Ada County just three months ago and I was in the office. So, you know, I have, I have, like I said, I have three kids my wife, you know, you know, if I touch something at work, you know, what happens, you know, then. So my anxiety level was, you know, very high um, and it still is high during this time. So these are real things that we're, that are real people are dealing with campus wide. So it's not just, um, you know, those that are, you know, working from home that have issues that they need to worry about, but it's those that are, like I said, are on the front line. So we recognize that and we do have things in place and, and for our employees to utilize things such as EAP. And I'll touch base on that here in a little bit. 
but fear and worry about your own health or like I said, the health of your loved ones, um, you know, that's a real concern. Sometimes people are changing their sleeping, you know, or eating patterns. I think Abel can attest, I think he had some uh, eating patterns he, he'll touch base on a little bit later on. But, you know, mental health conditions, you know, the worsening of that, you know, these are real issues that are going along campus wide. So many employees and staff members here on campus, you know, you know, have, like I said, have those same worries. And during this time, is it appropriate for us to show some kind of grace if you know your employees have some kind of issue? And I think the answer is yes, right? The empathy piece needs to be inserted. And you as a manager, it's your job to provide, to provide those tools such as like EAP or the programs, you know, that we may have in HR to ensure that your people are in the right position to succeed and be healthy. Because that, that's what we want at the end of the day. And Abel, do you want to touch base on anything? I know you said you had some changes in your behavior patterns uh, because of COVID-19. Yeah, you know, I, I jokingly, some, some of the statistics of the CDC are, are you know, I, I find um, a, a little bit humorous just for myself because, you know, changing in sleeping patterns seems to be, you know, a little bit different for me. You know, for me personally, I don't have, um, my house size is not big enough where I have my own office. So my office, my desk setup is in my master bedroom. So it's very close to my bed. So working, I work, I seem to work longer and sleep worse because I think just work in the mental, um, my switch isn't turned off where I can leave the office. And so I think um, even the sleeping patterns and the eating patterns, you know, a lot of us working from home, the fridge is just so close, right? It's And, and us not getting up enough and, and us not um, just taking breaks. I think, I think a lot of people feel like they have to work an overwork. So you know, I think there's a, there's, there is some mental, um, you know, health uh, things to think, consider. And, and many of people on campus have told us that, that they're struggling even with not having, there may be a social person. They may not be having a lot of interaction with anybody, right? So if you flourish at work by being around people, and that's part of what you love in your job, and now that's not there, that may affect your output, right? That may affect your quality or, and your anxiety may go up. And so there's a lot of mental um, conditions and problems that may come from that. But we want to ensure that, again, as managers, you know, if you're having those ongoing discussions and check-ins, whatever that looks like for you and your department and your and your employees, um, you know, if you're helping them and you understand their needs and wants, we would encourage you to just offer um, those services and, and, uh, and, you know, let them know that we have those available and refer them to HR if, if you feel that there's a need there. So we're happy to share any of those EAP programs that we have in HR and anything we can do to help your employees be successful and healthy mentally and physically. Um, so that's all I had for that. Um, winding down. So we, we're, we're at 11 minutes. And so this is actually great um, timing. Basically, we, we did have an opportunity. We sent out when we sent out um, communication with your leadership. And, and by the way, I want to thank um, Emily Burns for helping coordinate this uh, effort with HR. Um, you did a great job setting this up and, and communicating with, with this group. So I appreciate your work on that half on your behalf. Um, but we did have an opportunity to send out some pre-submitted questions ahead of time. Um, it looks like we didn't get any questions submitted from your group. So if you have any questions now, you'd like to have us answer. And again, it doesn't necessarily need to be on empathy on um, this topic specifically, or if you want to share any thoughts or inputs, we'd love to hear you. But um, also, if you have questions about the form, anything in general about when things are due, um, we've got the whole growth team here to help answer any of your questions. Um, so I'll, I'll pause for a second and allow anybody. Hey, Abel, I'd like to say something. Yes, uh, please. I'm getting a lot of emails about the signatures, what's actually required. So every department's different on how they handle it. But overall, it's really the supervisor and the employee. If you want to have the higher level signatures, that's fine, but it's not required. Yeah, th thank you, Tiffany. And, and Tiffany Trader, did you want to add anything in regards to the signatures or is that, is that good? Sure, I just popped into the chat box as well as far as signature options. If um, employees aren't able to sign, they can do a slash S slash type their name and that would count as their signature. So for the employee and um, the supervisor, both of them can do it that way. Thank you. Thank you, both Tiffany's, awesome. Um, any other questions, thoughts, input from the team or from this group? I 
I think last year, in terms of signatures, anybody that reported to a director, then was we got Randy's signature in addition to that. Do you want to do the same thing this year, Randy? Um, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't know. I think we need to think through the logistics of how it's going to work okay. and try to make it easy on folks. Awesome. Well, if there's no other questions, um, we just want to end with, um, I personally want to end with thanking this uh, group, particularly for your um, continual work on the university's behalf. Uh, I know many of you are still on campus and uh, you're, you're in HR's thoughts quite a bit and discussions about those that are still on campus serving the university. So um, you guys are awesome. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, I can see many of you still have, you know, have your masks there. You're, you're in front of ladders and tools. Um, so I appreciate uh, the work that you do for our university. And, um, you know, me personally, just, just thank you for the work. Also, thank you for being amazing leaders where you stand and lifting where you stand as leaders and managers. And we know that the commitment and time commitment it takes to do a, an evaluation and have a discussion, fill out a form, um, seems like a lot of work and you're right it is but from an employee standpoint those discussions are very valuable and I know personally being an employee in many companies the greatest leaders I, ha I had made me feel appreciated and they knew who I was they knew what I like to do a little bit they knew where I was from who, maybe my kids names and so just uh, keeping that in mind that building those relationships equals trust and transparency. And um, I think and a lot of times that's all employees want. They want to know that they are valued and recognized and that they can go to their manager. So thank you for your work that you're doing on that on the behalf of the employee and the university. Um, Kyle, did you have anything else to add or close with? No, definitely appreciate you all for joining us this afternoon. We hope you found it valuable and, and useful in, in your role. Uh, we encourage you all to reach out if you guys have any questions or concerns. Um, anything HR related, you know, we're here for you. And um, it's a pleasure being here with you all this afternoon. Can I um, jump in with a parting message? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I, I just want to say, you know, I really appreciate this message from HR this year. I think it's, it's very much needed based on, you know, all the things that we've be, been dealing with uh, since March. I know for sure that I'm going to be approaching my evaluations differently this year, simply because standard goals that I generally focus on won't necessarily apply. Um, but other amazing, amazing things ended up happening. So a shift in focus is definitely in order for me. I have complete faith in our supervisors to know how best to motivate, as well as hold your employees accountable. I know that each of you will determine the best approach knowing who your employees are and knowing how things went for them this year. Um, as a division, I wanna emphasize again, and I know I, I've been saying this a lot in my written messages to you, but collectively as campus operations, we exceeded expectations across the campus in response to the challenges this year. And we continue to do so each day. Um, the adjustments that everybody has made, the willingness to step up, the willingness to be creative, go beyond standard requirements, this group hit it out of the park and continues to do so. So I don't know how we could have been done it any better. I think I wanna make sure that you are all proud of what you did and proud of how you accomplishment, how you accomplish things. And I encourage you as supervisors to take this knowledge with you into your evaluations with your employees and make sure that you share that message as much as you can. Um, and of course, if you have questions, concerns, ideas, you know, as always, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Randy. That, that was Love awesome. It. I appreciate you on that. Um, so I appreciate you all for joining us today. We'll be respectful of your time. Uh, I'll give you back five minutes. With that, have a great afternoon. Thank you for your service. And, and good luck in your evaluations. Take care.